Father, I love you so much. Thank you for loving us. You're so kind to us and so good to us. We love you and thank you for all that you do. And Father, I pray right now for everyone who hears my words. I pray that you bless them, heal them, deliver them, prosper them, let their lives be full of heaven on earth, and not only for them, but for everyone and everything they love and care about. Father, we thank you that it is your plan and your desire to bring heaven to earth, on earth as it is in heaven. And we thank you for that day coming, and we ask you to show us what we can do to do our part to build your kingdom into this world. Thanks again, Father. I love you, praise you, and bless you. Through Jesus, my Lord, amen. I woke up today and a message was on my heart. It is a message I gave a while ago, but it seemed that Holy Spirit wanted me to repeat it. Some of you may have heard it before and need to hear it again as I did. And to some of the new listeners, this may be your first time hearing it. Please listen closely and let this love story sink into your heart. It's called, A King Chooses His Bride. Imagine there was a great king who fell in love with a woman working in the field. She never thought she would catch the king's eye, because in her eyes, she was ragged and dirty and plain. Her clothes were tattered and her hands were rough from working in the ground. She would never, for one moment, think that the king would even glance at her, and if he did, he would surely not approve of who she was. All the while, the king watched her, and in his eyes she was very beautiful because of the light that was within her. She was not as those in the king's court who thought themselves to be worthy of his love and his admiration because they had adorned themselves with great jewels and the finest perfume. She was humble and honest and content with the small things that she had. The king wanted her for a bride and decided he would send his servants to woo her for him. They were supposed to tell her she was lovely and very desirable to the king. They were supposed to give her the great gifts he gave them to bless her with. Instead, they used the gifts on themselves and tried to make themselves impressive in her eyes and cause her to serve them. The king told them to tell her that the palace was open to her and she could come in just as she is and he would be waiting for her. They lied to her and told her she was ugly and dirty and needed to change her ways if she wanted to impress a king. They even told her that if she would do many works for them and pay them a percentage of her wages, then they would put in a good word for her. They gave her many programs to clean herself up and a list of things to do and don't do so she would be desirable to the king. All this time, the king was still watching her and loving her and waiting for her to come to him just as she is and let him lavish her with the great gifts of his love. The king was in a difficult situation because he loved the servants that he sent to her but they were giving her the wrong message. He had no choice. Because of the great love he had for her, he sent his own spirit in invisible form to woo her and tell her how much he loves her. At first she thought she was hearing voices because of the sweet words that were bypassing her ears and speaking directly to her heart. These words were so contradictory to the words that the king's servants were speaking to her. These words told her that she was beautiful, just as she is, and that she doesn't need the rules and regulations given by the king's servants. All she has to do is surrender to the king's love and fall in love with him. Finally, it was too much. She couldn't resist the king's love, and she found that she didn't need the servants to speak to the king for her. She discovered that she could talk to him and he would respond to her with a tender voice filled with gracious words. 
He loves her so much that he hears her thoughts and her wishes, and even her whispers are like shouts to him. She began to sneak away into the quiet places and whisper to him and ask him who he is and asked him to reveal himself to her. She loved talking directly to him because his words were like honey, unlike the words of his servants who had not obeyed the king's instructions to share his love with her. She found that as she got into the quiet places, he caused her eyes to open and she could behold the king in visions and dreams. Then one day, while praying, he appeared right in front of her. He told her of his great love for her face to face and told her that she was beautiful and precious in his eyes. He revealed to her who she was by letting her see herself through his own eyes. Suddenly, her life was changed. She was filled with joy and couldn't keep her feet still because they would not stop dancing. She couldn't help but sing and her songs filled the earth until everyone knew that the king was in love with her and had chosen and blessed her. The king told her there would be a wedding soon. He had to remain at the palace for just a short time longer and soon he would come for her. This excited the woman so much, her wedding day was approaching, so she started getting herself ready. She remembered what she saw when she looked at herself through his eyes. As she meditated on the image that she had seen in his eyes, she became just like that image in the natural. No more was she plain or dirty, but she was dressed in white and covered with glory and with the fragrance of heaven. The whole earth admired her, and because of her beauty, multitudes of people called upon and worshipped the king, and they were sent invitations to the wedding. Some of the servants who had misled her repented to the king, and they were given permission to help her get ready for her wedding. They finally saw what the king saw in her, and they were sorry that they had ever hurt her. So now, my beloved, do you see how you are loved? You are the perfect bride for my son. You have had his heart and his attention from the start. Don't let others tell you that you're unworthy and ugly. You are glorious in the eyes of the king, and if you will see yourself through his eyes, you will become what you see. You will become glorious. There is a great wedding plan, and we will spare no expense. The king will come for you on a great white horse. He will be clothed in glory and honor, and there will be a procession of millions who will sing and play music and rejoice, and there will be great joy throughout the entire kingdom. The king will take you as his bride forever, and you will forget how it ever felt to be alone. You will be given a palace and gardens and a life fit for a queen. You will become glorious as you give your hearts to the king, and his love will be yours forever and ever. So rejoice and lift up your hearts and your praises unto your king. Shout out loud and proclaim your love for your king. He has proclaimed his love for you, and he will proclaim it forever and ever. Put aside the awful things that have been spoken about you, and listen to the voice of my spirit telling you who you really are. You are glorious, my people, and that glory will be revealed to the earth soon. Rest in my love for you and relax and enjoy the gifts bestowed upon you. There will be many more gifts coming from your king, and all he asks in return is for your love. Will you give your heart to him today? I sure hope you're encouraged by these words. Until next time, grow rich in his grace. I love you each and every one, and I'll see you soon.